गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वी आर लाइव विद आर वीकली इंस्टाग्राम लाइव सेशन विद ए स्पेशलिस्ट डॉक्टर टू डिस्कस योर हेल्थ केयर कंसर्न टूडे एज यू कैन सी आई एम एट अ डिफरेंट प्लेस आई एम एट आर क्यूरेका स्टोर इन इंदिरा नगर बैंगलोर so in uh, let me show you around our curica store how it looks like and then we'll start with the discussion with the doctor right so this is how our store looks like let me show it to you from outside as well so guys this is our indranagar store i believe you all can see it this is geeta our retail operations and this is our store wide variety of all healthcare products premium range of healthcare products we have for you as you can see products under different categories we have skin care wellness nutrition herbal ayurveda hair care हेल्थ केयर डिवाइसिस एंड पेन रिलीफ मैनेजमेंट सो नाउ वी गोइंग टू स्टार्ट आर सेशन वेरी वेरी सून आर डॉक्टर इज गोइंग टू बी हेयर विद अस ज्वाइनिंग अस एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट कॉमन सिम्टम्स फॉर चिल्ड्रेन एंड हाउ टू ओवरकम दैम दिस इज अ रेनी सीजन गोइंग ऑन एज यू माइट नो एंड इन द रेनी सीजन लॉट ऑफ चिल्ड्रेन गेट एफेक्टेड with a lot of issues you know uh with respect to the rain let's say cold fever cough viral infections uh, we are going to understand from a pediatrician how to take care of it and how to take care of your uh, kids how to increase their immunity and how to overcome these issues uh so yesterday we had a wonderful session uh with uh, all our guests a lot of people from different walks of life uh, fitness coaches uh healthcare professionals uh you know people who are in the food industry hospitality industry they all came to our store and they graced us with their presence they shared you know their ideas and views on how uh, our store experiences we are very glad to get a very positive response from them you will be seeing a lot of response from them on our instagram um, reels on the post and on the stories uh just waiting for dr sujita to join in uh, she is going to be with us in just a while and uh, she is going to help us understand a lot of uh, good points about how to keep your kids our kids healthy safe and sound during this season so if you got any questions for us please mention in your comment section below and we will come back to you with the answers to those uh, we'll request the doctor to answer your questions and she is going to cover all those and uh, we are going also going to post this video on our youtube as well and instagram channels so that uh, you can review it later on as well and you can share it with your family and friends uh, dr sujita is going to join us just in a while hi good morning dr sujita how are you i'm fine how are you i am doing great. Great, doctor. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So you can see, uh, I'm at the Eureka store today. Right. So we are discussing today's session from our Eureka store. So let me let me take on the questions from our listeners uh, who have uh, sent a lot of queries about overcoming you know child health issues during this season. uh doctor what are the common symptoms of cold in children and how can we alleviate them uh most common symptoms of cold actually mostly cold is normally caused by virus uh, so the common signs might be the child might have some nasal congestion and that will be a running nose mostly uh, nasal secretions will be clear first one or two days then it become thick in thick in consistency either yellow or green in color a child has cold sometimes that might be associated with fever cough and even ear pain can have can be there for the children also sometimes the child might also have drooling because uh, the small children has some difficulty in swallowing because of sore throat so that might be drooling these are some common signs of uh, common cold which is normally normal 
uh, you can treat it at home itself. Uh, during if you find your mm -hmm. child has some these symptoms, you can treat it in home itself. Uh, first thing is that you you have to uh, hydrate the child. That is, you have to give plenty of fluids, oral fluids to the child, and uh, uh, make the child to take rest for some time till the uh, symptoms mm -hmm. settles. Only if there is any uh, danger signs, then you can go to the doctor. Otherwise, you can treat it at home itself. Right, and and how can we prevent the spread of cold among the kids and siblings? Yeah, it's actually it's very difficult uh, to prevent the spread of uh, cold because uh, cold is uh, actually I told it is caused mostly by virus, which is really contagious. Mm. Uh, but adults mm. we can easily prevent it, but uh, siblings it's very difficult because uh, once the school going children will go to the school and get the virus and spread it to the kids in the home. So mm -hmm. the first thing is that we have to have a personal hygiene. That is, ask the child to hand wash after coming from the school. Ask the child to hand wash fully, mm -hmm. and then you can ask the child to touch the kid also. And whatever mm -hmm. uh, toys are there, you have to clean it every time because if your older kid is having some signs mm -hmm. of uh, cold, uh, you can just uh, clean the surfaces. What are toys the younger kid might be using? You can clean it. So that we can prevent the spread of the infection also, because uh, cold is normally uh, transmitted through air droplets. But when the child sneezes or coughs, it spreads to the other kids. So you can teach your elder kid to cough uh, by covering their mouth and nose. You can ask your child to cough like this, so that it won't spread it to eyes and ears and nose. And ask the child to don't touch your eyes, ears, nose whenever you have a cold, because this will spread the Cold easily. So these are some things you can uh, teach your elder child so that your younger child won't get the cold. Right, right. And 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 doctor, like, how should we be concerned uh, about a cold turning into something more serious? When 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 we should be concerned? Mostly, most of the colds you you need not treat it at home itself. It can be settled. But when the cold is uh, accompanied with fever for more than three days, and there is any difficulty in breathing, the child has some dis uh, difficulty in breathing, and uh, the child has some ear pain also, or any rashes in the body is also there. Then you have to see the doctor immediately because uh, some of the cold is viral, but sometimes if the cold can turn into bacterial infection such as pneumonia, chest infection can happen. In such cases, uh, you have to see the doctor. And the doctor might prescribe the medications required for your children. Okay. And uh, doctor, how can we manage ear infections in children? And uh, you know, when we should seek medical attention for them? A uh, ear infection, mostly when uh, I told you, whenever you have a cold, that might be uh, accompanied with ear infection, especially in children. Because until five years, uh, there is an eustachian tube. There is nothing but the tube which connects your middle ear to the back of the throat. This will be smaller in children, so they uh, they are more prone for uh, ear pain, ear infection whenever they have a cold and cough. In such cases, uh, you can see your child is rubbing your ear, rubbing their ear frequently, and you can see some ear discharges also, and the child might. Accompanied by fever, also there might be there. In such cases, uh, you can wait for 48 hours. You can just give a paracetamol. Uh, mm. For every six hours, once you can see for whether the pain is relieved or not. But if the pain mm. is not relieved even after 48 hours, and if you see any discharge or pus from the ear, and there is any redness or swelling behind the ear, then there is something serious is happening. In such condition. Uh, you should not use anything, and you should directly go to the doctor, either a pediatrician or a ENT. You should go and see the them immediately. Right, doctor. So, are there any home remedies or natural treatments that can help ear infection? Uh, mostly, uh, it won't work, but you can try some uh, hot compressions, like like a warm compressor. You can use it here for the children, like ten to fifteen minutes. And you can give plenty of fluids because uh, once you give fluids, the child will start swallowing. This make your eustachian tube open, so there will be easy drainage of the fluid also. But don't put any oil or any of cotton buds into this uh, ear because it will furtherly damage your eardrum also. So in, in case if you see any bags in your ear also, you don't put anything. Uh, don't put anything. 
you can see a doctor they can be giving a ear drops so that uh, you can give the ear drops for 5 days and you can take them to the ent doctor they will clean your ear uh, don't put oil or uh, ear buds otherwise uh, whenever i told you what are symptoms is there you have to visit the doctor immediately sure sure and when should we worry uh, about a fever in a child and seek medical attention mostly if uh, even if the child has fever but the child is active taking uh, food fluids everything and hydrated you need not worry but when, uh, when the fever is high that is more than one or two and there is any history of seizure in the child that is uh, sometimes some child uh, there is increased chance of seizure during the high fever in such cases you have to go to the doctor immediately and if there is any rashes along with the fever or any ear pain or ear discharge and the child is very dull and uh, not responding and not eating properly and the child is dehydrated and continuous vomiting and loose stools is there and the child is not able to move their body parts and they have some stiff neck these are some danger signs if you find if your child has these signs along with fever then you have to visit the doctor immediately oh okay okay and and when should we uh, uh, what is the best way to measure a child's temperature accurately uh, mostly accurately you can measure it through the thermometer now there is a digital thermometer which is easy to use also there is a, you can use a digital thermometer instead of mercury thermometers because it is easy to read also the best thing is that if your child is less than 1 years it is better to see in in the rectum but uh, parents it will they may have some difficulty in checking through the rectum uh, so you can use it through axilla because don't keep it in the mouth till 5 years of age because they tend to bite the thermometer so you can keep it in axilla uh, while keeping the axilla the bulb should be like this you should not keep like this you should be keeping like this and uh, by keeping in the oral temperature you can keep it underneath the tongue in case if you don't have a thermometer in your home uh, then you can just check it with the uh, dorsum of the hand you can use the dorsum of the hand and then you can check it either in the head or in the body or at the back of the child and see and compare it with your temp own temperature you, your temperature should be normal then only you can compare it but don't see the temperature in the palms and soles because sometimes it might be cold but the child might actually having a fever so you, you can use a dorsum of the hand and check the temperature of your child and if the child has fever the child the cheeks might be sometimes red and the child might be dehydrated these are some signs that your child has fever understood doctor so doctor how can we bring down a fever in a child uh, without medication but uh, better to give medications to the children you can uh, check the weight of the child and your doctor might be prescribing the paracetamol dose according to the weight of the child you can keep it in the home you once you know the dose every 6 hours once you can give the paracetamol drop syrup or uh, drops according to the weight of the baby but in case you don't have the paracetamol you can give a sponge bathing that is you can use a lukewarm water and you can sponge you should remove all the clothes of the baby baby and you can sponge you can give a sponging this can keep uh, reducing the temperature of the baby also and during a uh, fever you can give you should give plenty of oral fluids because uh, the child might be dehydrated during the fever time so you have to uh, hydrate the child frequently and this uh, sponge bath can help the child but better to give paracetamol every 6 hours once if the child's temperature is more than 100 degree you can give a paracetamol okay okay and uh, what are the recommended immunizations for children to prevent childhood illness doctor uh, whatever uh, vaccines or in your immunization schedule that is normal uh, immunization schedule you should be given but there is an extra vaccinations available to prevent your child from normal childhood illness and my first thing is the pneumococcal vaccine that is uh, this vaccine will prevent your child from pneumonia that is your lung infection as well as ear infection these vaccines should be given on uh, one and a half months two and a half months and three and a half months along with your other vaccination and this vaccination should be given a booster dose at one and a half years of age this vaccine is, uh, prevents your pneumonia and ear pain the another main vaccine is the flu vaccine now there is an increased incidence of flu so the the child must be vaccinated against flu also this flu vaccine you can give like a, at the 6 month and 7 month you have to give a two doses 
and uh, every year like before the two season like september you should give a one shot every year also and the other okay. thing is that rota virus vaccine which is nothing but a oral drops will be given this vaccine can prevent your child from diarrhea this vaccine also okay. will be given like uh, one and a half months two and a half months and three and a half months three and a half months of age this vaccine should not be given more than eight months of age this vaccine should be given three doses before eight months of age this can prevent diarrhea in your children these are some vaccination okay. that can prevent your children children from uh, common childhood illnesses and you should also vaccinate other vaccines which are in your schedule also mm -hmm. okay uh doctor there is a question coming in from a listener uh arun and arun is asking what is the best remedy for a dry cough i believe he is asking with respect to a kid only uh, what is the best remedy for a dry cough in children uh, dry cough uh, home remedies uh, you can use uh, till one year you, you should not use honey but after one year so mm. because uh, less than one year there is an increased mm. chance of botulism that is nothing but there is a bacterial infection which is dreadful so you should not use honey in children less than one year of age but if the child is more than one year of age you can till five years you can give a half teaspoon of honey either with a warm water and uh, more than five years you can give like one teaspoon in a warm water you can be given and you should use a nasal drops because most of the child has some nasal congestion along with the cough so you can use some nasal drops like uh, to relieve the nasal congestion and while sleeping as a child to sleep with the another one pillow because uh, when the child is in upright position there is increase uh, chance for draining the fluid so this can prevent the cough also but even after following this uh, if your child has some cough along with difficulty in breathing then you have to visit the pediatrician because they will be giving a cough syrup you should not give a cough syrup without uh, seeing a pediatrician on your own okay sure so uh there is a listener archika a swarup she is asking can you suggest any best and good tasty honey brand for babies ma'am there is no, no such branded uh, honey you can get a fresh honey now there is a, you can uh, get some fresh honey in the market itself uh, no such brands uh, you can directly get the pure honey nowadays you, i think you can get a pure honey from the market sure sure Thank you so much, doctor. And doctor, the, moving on to the next question: How can we differentiate between a common cold and allergies in children? Yeah, this is a nice question. I think uh, common cold and allergy uh, is different because a uh, common cold uh, there will be same thing. There will be uh, running nose will be there. Even in allergy, there will be running nose. But the main thing is that there will be fever in case of uh, uh, common cold. But in case of allergy, there won't be fever. But in case of allergy, you will be having running nose along with the clear secretions will be there. But the child might have along with some rashes also. In case of allergic rhinitis, the child start rubbing his nose uh, often. He starts rubbing his nose, and you can easily see a crease along his nose because uh, they are running rubbing their nose uh, frequently. You can see these creases also, and sometimes the child might have a dark circle under the eyes also. these are some signs of allergic rhinitis whereas when it's common uh, viral uh, rhinitis you will be having a fever will be there there will be body pain will be there and this uh, running nose will also be there but most of this common cold uh, will be settling in one one week to two weeks but as when allergic uh, rhinitis should be treated then only it will settle right right so doctor a lot of questions coming in from listeners let's take them one by one uh kartik is asking is there any vaccine to prevent recurrent cough and cold uh, that's what i told uh, the vaccine that is i told pneumococcal vaccine and flu vaccines you should take along with yeah. other immunization schedule this can prevent right. the all right all right so kartik please note that and uh, there is another listener snuggle kitty and she's asking hello ma'am my baby is 20 days old how much time interval to take for feeding to my baby Uh, that's what till three months of uh, age. Three months of age, you have to feed every two hours once. Like you have to every feed in one breast for ten to fifteen minutes, then another breast for ten to fifteen minutes. Every two hours once. Even when the baby is sleeping, try to wake the baby every two hours once and breastfeed the baby. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, ma'am Snuggle Kitty, I hope you have noted down this point from the doctor. And if you have any further question, you can ask in the comment section below. So Edwin is asking another question, doctor. Uh, we have six months old son. He uh, is suffering from heavy cough from past four days. It's continuous even after consulting a pediatrician. Any remedies you would recommend? That's what uh, if each cough will be different. We have to see the mm -hmm. child, and only we can see because uh, sometimes mm -hmm. the cough. Uh, if your cough is not settling even after medication, you can wait for another five more days. But if your cough is associated with some fever and child has some difficulty in breathing, then we have to do a chest X-ray mm -hmm. because uh, we can see whether there is an infection, there is pneumonia. In such cases, we have to give. Antibiotics and in some cases the, the child might need nebulization also. So we have to see the child and only we can uh, give the medications. Right, right. So Edwin, you should go and check a pediatrician. That is the advice from the doctor. And uh, pediatrician will be the best person to diagnose the actual issue and recommend accordingly. Right. So moving on, doctor, uh, next question. So are there any specific precautions parents need to take during the cold and flu seasons? Yeah, the best thing is that immunization uh, or pneumococcal mm -hmm. vaccines to be taken and flu, flu vaccines. That is before this uh, flu season, that is September itself, mm -hmm. every year the child can be given a flu shot. Mm -hmm. This can prevent at mm -hmm. least 80% of the flu infection also. And uh, try to uh, go outside during this cold season. Even if your child is going, use some thing to cover mm -hmm. their ears because muffler mm -hmm. or anything can, can be used because this can prevent the infection also. And uh, ask them to take some adequate nutritious diet and hydrate them properly. And even if there is some mild symptoms, if you have the child has fallen sick, try to mm -hmm. make the child to rest it in the home. Don't send it to the school because if you're sending the uh, kid to the school, it will spread the infection to other kids also. We have right. to find that if the child has some symptoms of cold or flu, try to restrict the ch child in the home and take care of the child till the symptom resolves. Right, so that it doesn't spread to the other kids as well. Right, thank you so much, doctor, for that. And then uh, Edwin has replied to your point. She is uh, very thankful. He's saying, Sure, doctor, thanks. And uh, moving on. Uh, Next to the next question, what are some effective ways to relieve coughing in children, doctor? That's what I told. Honey can be given to the child, mm. and then you, know, you can ask the child to uh, sleep in an upright position. This can be help the mm. child to relieve the nasal obstruction also, and mm. use the nasal drops also. Mm. And uh, that's what I previously told. Don't give cough syrup on your own mm. because uh, every cough will be different. Some cough will be dry cough. Some cough there will be mucus will be there. Some cough that will be having difficulty in breathing. So it is different. So it will be only the doctor can diagnose the cough and find out the cause for the cough and treat it. Understood, doctor. So, doctor, next question that listeners are asking us is that when should parents consider using antibiotics for their child's illness? This I won't recommend. Uh, uh, you should not give antibiotics on your own because previously I told many of the cough and cold is mostly caused by virus. So if, if it is caused by virus, there is no use of giving antibiotics also. And moreover, some of the antibiotics can cause allergy in children. And some can yeah. cause even diarrhea, vomiting in children. And even if you are giving antibiotics, your child might uh, develop some resistance to the antibiotic. So when, when the child yeah. next time needs uh, antibiotic, if you give him giving the same antibiotic, that won't work because the child has developed resistance. So yeah. it's better to avoid antibiotic on your own. Only if, you, if the child needs the antibiotic, there is a need for antibiotic only, you can give that too on the advice of the doctor because only the doctor knows which antibiotics works for which infection. You should not give mm. antibiotic on your own. Right, right. So, doctor, uh, moving on to our next question, uh, a part of it you have already covered uh, previously. Uh, are there any specific measures parents can take to prevent recurrent ear infection in their child? Uh, I think there is an internet yeah, yeah. issue. Uh, can yeah, you repeat the back. question? Yeah. So, yeah, sure, I will. So, are there any specific measures parents can take to prevent recurrent ear infection in the child? 
Ah, uh, that's what. Uh, mainly, the air infection is caused along with cold. So, if you if you prevent the child from cold, uh, you, uh, there will be there is a less chance for air infection. And there is I already told uh, if you get the pneumococcal vaccine, this can prevent the child from air infection. And continue breastfeeding at least for six months because this can prevent air infection also. And don't avoid bottle feeding the infant because if you give through bottle, sometimes some of the milk can. Spill into the ear. This can cause ear infection. So avoid bottle feeding and avoid uh, using pacifiers because this can uh, cause ear infection also. Right, right. So, doctor, uh, our listener uh, Snuggle Kitty, whose question you have answered, has replied, "Thank you for your kind information, ma'am. But my baby was sleeping more than three hours. Can I wake him uh, and feed him?" Should she wake her baby and feed? Yeah, they, they, they should. The baby can sleep even for uh, 16, so 20 hours a day also. So, but every two mm -hmm. hours, one you try to wake the child and give the breastfeed. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, yeah. uh, during when the baby is sleepy, the baby might not suck properly. In such mm -hmm. cases, mm -hmm. you can express your breast milk and give it through paladai because even if the baby is sleepy, while giving through paladai, the baby might take. But uh, so right. better every two hours once you wake the baby and direct breastfeed. Right, right. Uh, moving on to our last question of the day, doctor. There is a listener, Nishanti, wants to ask: uh, Does recurrent cough means my kid's immunity is low? Yeah, it's uh, mainly if the child has recurrent cough. Then your child's immunity is Ooh. very low. And if the child has Ooh. recurrent cough, you have to find out the cause of the cough. Cough because. Uh, that might yeah. be the child might have some of asthma or TB or anything. Yeah. So in such cases, yeah. we have to do a workup and find out the reason for this recurrent cough. Right, right. So a root cause analysis needs to be done, right, to understand what is the issue. So uh, thank you so much, doctor. I'll just cover the store once uh, to show it to uh, our listeners. Uh, you know, how does it look like? Uh, here you, you can see, you know, our CEO. Vivek Agarwal. Oh, hi. So Vivek hi, is Vivek. here. Yeah. So Vivek, can you show us the child care section? Because today, uh, you yeah, know, we have a pediatrician with us. So guys, we have got all the products that you can see here for the child care. Uh, all the major brands, yeah, Cetaphil, uh, Sebamed, Chico, Per, you know, all the major products are here. And you can see also some of the specialty foods that uh, the doctors recommends for the kid. We have got everything, and this is for the adults, you know, and mothers, we've got all the specialty products here. Even a baby stroller we have got here. So, you know, you can walk into our store in Indranagar. It is at a very uh, nice location at 12th Main. Uh, you can see here, it's just across, you know, ICCI Bank is here, and uh, behind the ICCI Bank is our uh, Kurika store. It, it looks like this. Uh, it's kind of a hidden secret inside Indranagar. So not many people are able to figure out because this is a giant tree in front of it. Uh, but this is one good area that you can come in and uh, get all solutions to your, you know, your everyday problems. So thank you so much, doctor, for connecting with us today. I really appreciate your time with us, and we do look forward to having you again in our Instagram live. Uh, once again, thank you so much, and have a happy weekend, doctor. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think care. you have covered all the products, baby products in your store. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, doctor. Yeah, take care.